Wow, look at that moon and those craters today. Whoa. Hey, everybody. Stargazer Mark here. We're glad that you're with us as part of our Stay Curious program here at the American Space Museum, where we bring you backyard astronomy every Monday. And we're going to be checking out that beautiful first quarter moon that's in your sky, no matter what part of the world you're in. And uh, so glad that you're with us. Marty Winkles behind the camera. Jessica Galloway's doing some wonderful things. Uh, to bring the video. We're going to have a video at the end of the moon and some other things. I'm reaching down here to grab my snacks because we're out here stargazing in the backyard of uh, Titusville here looking at the beautiful moon. You're going to see it tonight. We're going to tell you what's up this middle of the month of September. And of course, if you want to learn some constellations, you get yourself a planisphere. We sell them here at the museum and bookstores have them. You, you put in the right date and time. And so your eyes stay dark adapted to the night. You use a red flashlight to look at things at night. If you use a white one, your eyes don't get dark adapted anymore. The pupils uh, uh, contract. You want them to dilate out. Not so important with the moon and the planets, but it is to see the constellations and so forth. So get hooked up with that and get comfortable in a nice chair. We've got some snacks, a drink and ready for some moon gazing tonight. So the moon is doing a moon dance all week. We've been watching it go from crescent phase in the west after sunset over across. It'll be directly south. Here is a beautiful behind me, the phases of the moon from left to right from what we just had behind me, the crescent phase, first quarter. That's a, called a gibbous moon. Full moon of September will be coming up here in a, in a week. And then the moon rises after sunset uh, about 50 minutes later every day is when the moon when you see it uh, in the sky tonight at eight o'clock about uh, it'll be at that point of the sky about 50 minutes later tomorrow so but before we get into showing you some beautiful pictures that i've taken of the moon through a telescope and almost anyone can do that we want to show you explain to you first that when it gets sunset tonight about eight o'clock Go out, look to the west where the sun set. You're going to see a real super bright star at the top. That is Venus. And then there'll be another bright star in a line, uh, a diagonal line from Venus at like 5 o'clock. That is a bright star called Spica. And just below Spica, continue that diagonal 4 o'clock or uh, the 5 o'clock line on a clock face. You're going to see the planet Mercury. But you got to look quick because Mercury is only going to be there for about a half an hour. And it's going to rise up a little bit higher over the next week, and then it'll plunge back down in its orbit around the sun. Takes it four times a year in our evening sky and in our uh, morning skies where it'll pop up later on uh, in October, November. The first quarter moon is up there, beautiful to see. And to the right of the moon is a bright red star. That is Antares in Scorpio, the Scorpius, the scorpion. So the moon is actually in a constellation that is not part of the zodiac. It's called Ophiuchus, O-P-H-I-C-U-S, O-P-H-I-C-U-S. Ophiuchus is the name of a Greek serpent bear. He was a snake handler. Of all the names out there, I see people naming their kids. I've yet to see anyone named Ophiuchus, but that is the first name of a Greek snake handler, okay? And uh, they don't recognize it in the, in the astrology or astronomy zodiac. They should because uh, 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 the moon's in that constellation right now and all the planets spend a old couple weeks in there during their, their movement around the sun. But between, so Ophiuchus is between Scorpio and to the left of the moon is Sagittarius. And that looks like a teapot, a dot to dot teapot outline there. But uh, the moon right now is 226,000 miles away. That's actually pretty close. That would make it a super full moon if it wasn't a super first quarter moon. And we've talked before that that super full moon stuff is just infinitesimally a, a, a thousand miles or so closer to the Earth. And it doesn't look much bigger or much brighter. But uh, so we're going to look also, we can't forget about when you're out stargazing tonight, the next couple nights, uh, the moon uh, we'll be moving to the left, all right, because it's going 2,000 miles an hour around the, the Earth, and the Earth is only rotating 
at a little over 1,200 miles an hour. So it's the fastest car lapping us every 29 and a half days if it was a speedway race situation here like in NASCAR. But you're going to look, Venus is setting in the west, super bright. Then you're going to see the that's the third brightest object in the sky behind the sun and the moon. Then, of course, the fourth brightest object is rising in the east, and that's Jupiter. And you're going to see beautiful Jupiter uh, is just getting up higher uh, as, as the days go by. But you look at Jupiter to the right, and there's a soft yellowish star. That's not a star. That's planet Saturn. So tonight you can see Saturn, Jupiter, Mercury, if you're real quick, because Mercury will only be there about a half an hour, and then Venus. So we'll, talk, we'll have all fall to talk about Jupiter and Saturn and show you some wonderful amateur astronomy photos of that. But today we're going to focus on the first quarter moon. And let's look at one of the pictures there. We got them a little out of, out of sequence there. Let me go. All right, let's start with the first quarter moon there. There's the first quarter moon the way it looks tonight. And you have there the Terminator is the line between night and day. All right, not an Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. The Terminator is that difference between night and day. And when you're outside in the twilight or get up early in the morning in the morning twilight, you're sitting under the Earth's Terminator, the difference between night and day. Every visible object that's illuminated has a bright side and a dark side, all right? So you're looking at the Terminator of the moon there. I love uh, bringing it up a little bit bigger there to point out. Look at those craters and the, the dark areas are Maria. They are ancient lava seas that bubbled three billion years ago in the four and a half billion year history of the moon. And then they froze, okay? There's no atmosphere on the moon, of course. But this stuff, the lava bubbled up like a, a, a 10 weight motor oil, not like a big uh, 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 mo uh, molasses or something like that. But also one point is you see all the craters along the Terminator. That is where we look to see details in there. So uh, Jessica Galloway's behind the command module. She's got a, uh, a question. Oh, uh, you might try that, Jessica. She was going to try to move the and, and make the moon expand and bigger, and uh, as she's doing it there, there you go. Uh, yep. But uh, even with binoculars, like I had with a good pair of binoculars here, you can see a lot of good detail on the moon. All right, you can see things that that uh, of course the naked eye can't see, and this is sports time where a lot of Friday night high school football and college football, everyone's got a pair of binoculars, all right? Put them on the moon tonight. You're going to be amazed at how much you see. And a little tip, you got to hold them steady, and a good way to do that is put your elbows against your, your chest and cradle that thing. Don't have your elbows out there like that wobbling around because the, 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 the binoculars are going to move around. You want those elbows tucked in against you, or better yet, there's things you can buy to mount your telescope on a tripod and, and then view hands-free. Um, go to the next image here is a close-up. We're going to go, we're going to look at the, from the northern hemisphere down to the southern hemisphere, okay, in the center, as if we're scanning down with a telescope on that. And we're going to do that on a movie here at the end. And there's the center of the uh, moon tonight around first quarter. Look at those wonderful craters there. They're catching morning light. And as you know, it's during the morning light that, that we see shadows and shadows mean details. So we're always photographing things around the, the morning light of the moon on the, on the Terminator there. And we're going down to the southern part of the moon here, as you see. And this is at the very bottom is where we're going to land. It's in shadows now, but one of the craters that we want to land with a man and a woman on Artemis in three or four years is at the bottom of the moon because that's where ice is. Ice brought by comets buried in, in, in craters that never get sunlight. So they never warm up. They're always 200 below zero, never get up to 200 above zero. And here's another beauty. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things about the moon that I think is very interesting. Like, well, there's so many things here to see. Uh, pan out a little bit on that. Everything is named on the moon, okay? Everything has got a name. The names are mostly uh, philosophers, writers, 
Uh, of course, 90% of them are men because they were named back in the 1800s is when the first moon maps uh, appeared with names on them. And uh, uh, several astronomers were responsible for that, and they adopted the names. So we put the names on here and some of the details. Oh, wrong, wrong way there. I put on there a couple features that you would see. Up here at the very top is that slash through the mountains. That's the Alpine Valley. A lot of features were named after features on Earth. The Alpine Valley, no exception. These are, are the Apennine Mountains. 100 miles long, all right, and you can see that easy. And I love showing out that arrow shows you Mount Piton sticks through the frozen lava on the shores of Mare Imbrium then. That used to be a mountain peak that got covered up in lava. And then after that, you see Ar Aristillus, a 35-mile wide crater hit after this lava had uh, froze, as well as Archimedes there, a 50-mile crater, bathed, that's one of my favorite craters, bathed in, in still uh, night. It's, its western rim is just catching the sunlight. And you can watch this through a telescope over an hour or a couple hours. Go in, back in and out, and you'll see the floor of Archimedes be revealed within hours while you're watching that. And over on the right, between the Sea of Serenity and Mare Imbrium here uh, is the Apollo 15 landing site in Mount Hadley, where I marked it right there. And uh, so there you see a couple other Aristotle up at the top is 50 mile wide crater. So here's another region of the moon that's towards the center. All right. And again, I wanted to show you that we have named these things up at the top is the Marsh of Decay. All right. The Sea of Vapors. All right, uh, there you have a rill. The Hyginus uh, and Eridaris, uh rills are, are meandering uh, valleys that aren't valleys. They're actually lava tubes, they think, or areas of the moon. They're not deep. They're actually a little bit high is what we call a rill. It's a fold in, in, in the tectonic. There wasn't tectonics on the moon, but during the impacts of meteors bombarding the moon, pushed soil together and created rills. So uh, the Sea of Vapors, how about that? And then next is the three big craters in the middle there that are easy to see tonight. Ptolemius, Alphonsus, and Arzakel uh, from top to bottom. Ptolemius is 90 miles in diameter. All right, the crater beside it, Albatinogenes, uh, named after, like you said, Greek, Roman philosophers in there. But you notice the central peak in Alphonsus we wondered if this was a volcanic central peak or created by an impact of the of a, a asteroid or large meteoroid. And uh, we actually sent Ranger 9 on a kamikaze it was a crash mission in 1966 to crash into this to see what that peak was made of. And we were determined it wasn't volcanic. It was like you up there uh, in the northern times th when it snows and making a snowball and smashing it into the ground, it creates a central peak by the physics of all that. So can't forget your snacks when you're moon gazing, okay? So I brought some of mine with me, got some water here. Because when you go outside, plan to stay out in a, at least a half hour like you're watching a sitcom TV show or something. You'll be amazed at the things you'll see in the sounds you hear. And here we are at the southern part of the moon tonight. And there is Magnus, 140 miles across. Some big craters on the, uh, the, the, the southern part of the moon, which is more bombarded than the northern part. And there you see some of the names. Michael Faraday, you see on the right, uh, was a, a scientist. Lilianus, Fernelius, Walter. Some of these, there's books about all these to look up the names and see why they're named after that. Uh, I guarantee you, you know, there's a lot of strange names on the moon. Uh, and uh, Galileo doesn't have a very big name on the moon. Why? That's an interesting story. Galileo does not have a prominent, though there's a Copernicus and, and the other of the as, uh, scientists you would think of, Newton, because Galileo's theories were so controversial that the sun was the center of the solar system, not the moon. And uh, so who... They just named a very modest crater after Galileo. He should have one of the biggest ones on there. I like Walter. You like Walter? I don't, I'm thinking that's his, uh, is 
No, no, there's a lot of American. No, the, gr the Greeks named, the good point, uh, Gen uh, Jessica's pointing out here, uh, and I appreciate her and Marty always being here to interject, and, and for you out there that are staying curious, uh, she's curious, Walter's not Greek or Roman? Of course not. This was the 1800s, 1750s, the 1830s is when a lot of the moons were names were featured. Uh, some of the astronomers of the day that made some of the maps said, I'm going to name this after me, Walter. Uh, I'm not sure who Walter is, but the International Astronomical Union was formed to formalize all these names. So we do have modern craters on the moon named after Armstrong, Collins, and, and Aldrin of Apollo 11 and uh, some smaller craters and backside of the moon craters that have been named for more modern people. Uh, so I'm sure, I hope I don't live long enough, but one day there'll be a politically correct movement to rename all the <laughs> craters on the moon because they'll discover some of the people there didn't deserve it. Uh, but we definitely need more women's names on the moon and uh, as the moon is going through our sky. So I think that's my uh, last picture to show up close there and uh, we want you to go out and get some moonshine like I always say it's the kind of moonshine you can't get too much of and to go out on this backyard astronomy program Jessica's going to bring up on her trekkie techie skills there a movie that I shot with an eight inch telescope it's going to be horizontal uh, and we're going to go across from the from the my far right over here we should see the moon creeping through. There we go. This is taken through a telescope, about an eight inch telescope, very modest. I want you to notice, this is how you'd see the moon through a stargaze in our uh, astronomy club or here at the museum. Look at those, I love the shadows of the mountains, how they're extended up across there. Now Jessica's not doing this, I'm doing this through a telescope. Look at these mountain peaks here. And, and the, the shadows they're casting. There's our Zockel. We were just seeing those. And I moved a little further there to show you what you can see through your telescope. There's an interesting feature like a horseshoe there uh, in the, uh, uh, the lava sea. There's the straight wall you see over to the right. Cassini is the, the crater there at the edge of the mountain range that has two craters inside of it. And uh, that's a pretty one. Look at those spectacular shadows on the floor of Mare Imbrium there. I just love that, th those views and Piton sticking up out of there. There's the shadow, there's the, the straight uh, va um, Alpine Valley all the way to the end of the moon. So hope that you're enjoying this little lunar voyage that we took you from your own backyard. You can see these things and uh, we'll let that go out, jiggled away. I didn't get to point out that you saw the <clears throat> the uh, the heat wave sort of thing going on, and that's the Earth's atmosphere going through. So, well, we hope that you enjoyed getting in the backyard with the moon, and hope you get in your own backyard wherever you are and see the moon tonight. It's the same anywhere in the world, okay? In fact, uh, our friends in Europe and, and Australia are enjoying uh, the, the darkness of uh, the moon right now, and hope that you get out and get your little moonshine, and we'll be back with you tomorrow with another Stay Curious program. Until then, I'm Mark Marquette, and we can't wait to see you inside our museum to bridge the space between us. Get out there, do some stargazing, moon gazing. See you out there. <laughs>